It's been a tornado, a whirlwind, just ups and downs. Um, from what happened, first bet was a blur and all kind of grouped into one day slash lifetime. Um, everyone's kind of going through their own little side of hell, but definitely being together as a team has been a saving grace there where guys have really come together and definitely bonded and helped each other out. So that's helped a lot. Obviously going home for Christmas, everyone's seeing their families. I think I think uh, seeing the families hit a little bit harder for the guys. Um, but since we came back um, after Christmas, the level of play and intensity has been way higher. So I think guys definitely know know who we're playing for. On, on the day that you get the news, I mean, wh- what's your initial reaction? Uh, yeah, when it first happened, it was impossible to believe. Like, I, I walked past the car, the car wreck and I saw that. I was like, whoa, like, that's, that's really not good. Like, fuck, someone might be paralyzed, someone might be really injured. Death was never, never something that crossed my mind. So when we got the phone call and I heard that, that was just heart dropping. And me and Corbin, when we got the call, it, it was just, we got that and then just started bawling our eyes out. And it was, yeah, it was definitely a lot. Not many people really know those guys outside of your team. So why don't we start with, with uh, Owen McInnes? Um, what pops to mind when you think about him? He was one of the nicest guys I've met. Um, we moved into the same house at the same time. So we've been roommates for the past couple of years. And knowing him as a human being, he's someone that no matter what's going on in my life, I could always go to him, talk to him, and talk about anything. And he was someone that I grew very close with very fast. Um, he was a phenomenal human being, smart, quick-witted, and he was always himself. There was never a fake face put up or put things lightly. He told things as he saw them, and he was a, a great human being. You were roommates with him even this year as well? Yeah. My goodness. So, so yeah, since the, when the accident happened and his family came out, things of, like, cleaning out his room or having his Christmas gifts arrive at our front door, like, it's been, it's been nonstop having to deal with that. So. Let's switch gears to last weekend. Um, it's a regular season game, but it really feels like a championship game, right? I mean, you guys go in there as underdogs. Everybody in volleyball knows what's happened with you guys, and you come out of there with a with a big win. I mean, what did that win mean to you guys? Uh, as corny as it sounds, that win meant more than I can ever put into words. Um, with Waterhouse getting better in the hospital, Riley watching is great to give them a, a performance and then also just knowing that Owen was he was with us there the whole time that meant a lot and after we I, I purposely was not looking at the score because I knew that as soon as I saw we get to 24 I'd start crying midpoint so I didn't know we won until everyone else started cra- uh, storming the court so when that happened it was pretty instant tears and the all tears of happiness and pride and love after the handshake line um, a little side note here. I'm actually wearing Owen McInnes' shoes right now. Like he, I took them. He, he offered them to me a couple of days before he passed. So I was like, I'm, I'm wearing the, these shoes for the rest of my career, type thing. So after we won, I like just sat on the court, holding his shoes, bawling my eyes out for 10 minutes because it was, it was a lot. The decision to play on in the first place was it, was it a matter of like you get together and you talk about it, or you just knew right from the from the start you were going to keep playing? It was never something that was really talked about. Obviously, when the accident first happened, no one was talking about, oh, well, how's this going to mean for the season? But as the days and weeks kind of went on, we all knew what had to happen. And I think Pat worded it really well of with Riley fighting in hospital to recover, Waterhouse still working through. Um, if we're going to say to those guys, hey, man, keep fighting, keep doing it, keep giving it your all we sure as shit can't stop fighting on the court. Like, we have to go and give everything we have and show them that if they're going to fight, we're going to fight with them. So that was... The guys that are still with us, do you have any kind of update from them? Have you guys had, I think you've had contact from Riley, right? I mean, can you give us some kind of an update on them? Yeah, so Riley, thankfully, has moved to GK Strong in Vancouver, the rehab facility. Um, I think it was just good for him to get out of just the hospital. From what I heard talking to some of the other guys, he is there with, a couple other guys that he like knows a li- like knows of from Kelowna, his hometown. So I think that would be a good moral uh, morale boost for him. Uh, exciting news on Waterhouse: they have eased his sedation. His eyes have been open. He was like looking around, kind of like tracking guys. And I believe 
probably right as we're speaking now, he's being moved to the Kelowna ICU, which is great that A, he's stable enough they can transport him, and also B, for his family, that they don't have to split time between, oh, thank you, uh, split time between Kelowna and Kamloops to see their son. So on the, on the up for both the guys, from what I can tell. Anything else you wanted to add? Um, I just want to thank everyone for the support that we've gotten. It's been, it's been a really hard month and a half now, but the support and all the caring, all the donations to the GoFundMe, Owens Memorial Scholarship, it all does mean a lot to us, so thank you guys. One more, actually. On Wednesday, there's a celebration of life. I yes. mean, what are you expecting from that as far as emotions and, um, yeah, in general? Honestly, just getting mentally prepared for more emotional hardship of... Yeah, it's, it's, it, it's a community of Kamloops' opportunity to kind of say their goodbyes to Owen. Um, I was fortunate enough to go to his funeral in Ontario, but there was a lot of guys from the team, a lot of students at TRU or people that he's just known in the community that weren't able to go to the funeral. So this is their chance to say their goodbyes. I think it'll be very emotional for a lot of people. Uh, I'd say the first like couple of weeks were just a big blur, like... Not really sure what's going on, not really like processing it and like not really believing it was true what happened. And then kind of all soaked in and just like a lot of being with the team, a lot of emotional, like emotional stuff going on, pretty down. And then, yeah, this last week we've like gone back to playing volleyball. We're back together again and I think we're ready to go. And yeah. Does it, does it still seem a bit like it's not real life to you? And where, where are you at in the whole process? Yeah, I don't know. I still feel like it hasn't, like, hit me fully, fully yet. Because it's just, like, a really unfortunate, tragic accident that happened. And still kind of hoping on Riley and Oz and kind of focusing there. And then, obviously, with McInnes, it's very, very sad. But I don't know if it's still, like, fully hit me yet. So I'm just kind of waiting a little bit. Do you have any special memories with him? Anything that stands out when you think about Owen McInnes? Yeah, Owen McInnes was my roommate, so just hanging out with him every day. I'd drive him to school, drive him to practice. Just his, like, presence in my life was pretty big over the past, like, three months. So just not seeing him every day is, like, honestly, every day was just a memory with him and creating memories. So it's it's been pretty sad every day missing him in my life. Uh, I want to ask you about last weekend. Um, you guys, I don't know if you could have known what you were going to play like, right? With all that going on, you go in there, you're an underdog against Winnipeg, you go on the road and you get a win. I mean, what what was that night like for you guys? Yeah, it was it was amazing. We didn't expect how we were going to play or how we were going to do. We were just going to go out there and give it our all and hope for the best. And the win for us on that weekend was just being able to play and being as a team and giving it our all. And whatever happened, happened. And we ended up playing, like, very good. And, yeah, it was a very emotional win on the Friday night. And, we played for those three boys, so I was pretty thrilled to be able to go out and get that win. Obviously, there's been a lot of emotion for, for all the guys. What sparks it for you? I mean, what, what makes you feel it? Yeah, I mean, each one, of the, like, each one of those guys had, like, a significant part of my life. Like, I've known Owen Waterhouse since I was, like, in elementary school. We've been best friends since then. Uh, Riley, he went to my high school. He was year older. He's the guy I'd work out in the summer with. And then Owen McInnes was my one of my roommates, so... Each one of them had, like, a pretty big part of my life. So, yeah, I mean, I miss them all a lot, but I don't know, yeah. I, I think with Owen Waterhouse, I heard there's some good news. Yeah. But there's there's an uncertainty there, yeah. right? How hard is it to navigate that part of it? Yeah, it's just kind of hoping for the best, but still preparing for the worst-case scenario that can happen. But, yeah, I just think every day sending my positive energy, positive vibes, and just hoping that, the best case scenario happens have you been in contact with his family you say you've known him for a long time yeah yeah i text his mom and his dad and his brother like quite frequently so i get a lot of the updates first so yeah i text him every day just letting them know that i'm thinking of them and i'm like uh owen waterhouse's mom texted me after the first game saying that oz would was happy to hear that we won and i just said that he was right there with me in my heart like he's always with me so yeah like we've got a pretty special bond like me and his family last one a lot of people who you don't know in this city and in from the school i mean a really rooting for you guys that have been yeah. been you know showering you guys with support but from afar i mean have, have you felt it i mean have you felt how much people are behind you guys yeah definitely there's been 
an unreal amount of support and it's we're all super grateful for it it's really helping us through this and helping us push through and be able to play each weekend yeah the support's been like unbelievable it's pretty unbelievable man you know you see stories like this um and you never expect it to happen to someone like you uh to your community um to your people it's it's been a rough couple lot of six uh six weeks a lot of stuff's happened a um, lot of information, a um, lot of news being shared. Um, it's just been a lot to process because um, obviously there's three separate cases, three separate incidents that happened and each of them has their own kind of baggage uh, to go with that. Uh, each family that's affected in a different way and each uh, uh, set of guy on the team is affected uh, differently. So it's been a pretty hectic uh, couple, six weeks. You personally, I mean, I gather all you guys are pretty close with each other as teammates, but um, why don't we start with Owen McInnes. How, What was your relationship like with him? Um, so I played for three years with Owen McInnes. Uh, we entered rookie year together. Um, he was an amazing guy, man. Uh, me and him shared a love for hiking uh, and the outdoors. So road trips, we would always talk together and um, talk about hikes we want to do around Kamloops. Um, and then obviously talked a lot about uh what he was planning to do after kind of university with his girlfriend and those things. And yeah, we just expand on that. He was a great guy, um, really good team player. He also loved cooking and I love cooking as well. So we talk about cooking and stuff like that. So it was pretty great. Did you guys ever cook together? We did actually every, um, every year we have a cooking competition in between the teams. Um, and he, we were never on the same team, but always on different teams competing against each other. And it always kind of ended up being uh, my dish against his dish, which was always a good time. Cause, uh, he loved cooking and I love cooking, so it was a good battle and we joke about it. So, yeah, good memories there for sure. I mean, you, you talk about these cooking competitions and you talk about his plans that he, that he had and, and those are no longer going to happen. I mean, how, how hard is it to think about um, the finality of it all? Uh, I can't even put it into words. He was such a free spirit. Um, he just loved being around people, uh, loved exploring, loved adventuring. Um, there's so many things he wanted to do, but now guys on the team are just going to do that in his memory. And how important has, has Pat been in all this and, and your team as a whole? Uh, Pat has been absolutely extraordinary. Um, the whole, actually, Tier U community, um, through the sports teams, the school itself has been amazing. Uh, we've got counselors in to help us with everything. But Pat, he's just been a rock um, for all of us here. Um, sharing obviously very tough information with us uh being open as someone we can talk to and as a strong uh male figure in all our lives that we can uh, look up to um so he's been amazing and the guys on the team have been very supportive of each other we're a very close team uh like we've been having team events and just dinners together pat's like helped organize all that in the university itself and just get guys in the same room talk about things um, share stories about the boys, uh, share positive news, things going on in their own lives, boys just talking together. So it's been very helpful. Uh, last one on Friday night, you guys came out with a win. It's a middle of the regular season, but it, it felt like a championship victory of some sorts. I mean, to us on the outside, what did that feel like for you getting that win? It was very emotional. Um, obviously, before the game, we had a quick moment of silence. Uh, for Will McInnes and then also just uh, to share positive vibes for the other two boys to help them get through it and uh, hope they can recover to the fullest of their abilities. Um, but yeah, after that moment of science, some of the boys on the team were pretty emotional going into that game. But we went out there and we played some of the best volleyball we've ever had in honor of those guys. Uh, we put up a fight. We played amazing. Winnipeg's a great team. Um, so we just went out there and fought. And after the game, there's definitely some tears shed. It was a very emotional win for the team um, to kind of prove that we can go out there and still do this. Um, it's not going to hold us back. Um, kind of just to prove um, that we're still here, we're still capable. It's going to be a tough, it's going to be a really hard road ahead. But if we stick together, keep fighting, uh, keep staying positive, um, hopefully good things can happen and the boys would be proud. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's every coach's and probably parent's nightmare is three young guys that their lives have been drastically changed from one one incident. And it, it almost makes it worse that it was so mundane. And someone said, oh, they're at the wrong place at the wrong time. I'm like, 
they were at the right place at the wrong time. They're just getting a sandwich. Conditions are perfect. They're stopped at a light. That just still makes it hard to comprehend. Yeah. Um, I mean, you're a coach. You have responsibilities. You're also a human being who's, who's going through all tragedy and trauma. How have you been holding up through all of it? And what have your roles been? You know, the first couple of weeks was almost easier because you just there's fires everywhere that you're trying to put out. And I think when you're used to doing stuff in action, it almost makes it easier. It's terrible, but we have to deal with parents, where we're putting people up, trying to find accommodations, a whole bunch of different things going on all at the same time. So between that and my family, it's almost too busy to really think about it. The week going into Christmas, the guys were all gone, which was a sense of relief that they're at home. We don't have to worry about them anymore. Uh, that was a tough week to try to, you know, start to, to sink in a little bit. And, uh, yeah, it just was really hard to even enjoy the holidays with the kids. I, I tried my best, but it's it's just really weighed heavy. And, you know, when we came back the first couple of practices, I was terrible. Uh, just trying to get back into the rhythm and, you know, how, how do you respond? What are you going to say? And uh, the guys took a real leadership role in that, and they just kept pushing hard. And they want to be on the court. They want to do it for the guys. So I got to give credit to the team for really pulling together. We haven't heard a whole bunch about um, what Owen McInnes was like. Who was he, you know? I mean, when you think about him, what are some of the first things that pop into your head? Yeah, I mean, Owen is a guy that always had a smile on his face. Uh, He was prepared to work. You know, he came in. He had to work for every position on the team up to traveling and dressing. Uh, You know, what I mentioned at the funeral out in Ontario, and I'll, I'll mention this Wednesday, is like he's a guy that had very average grades. Uh, here for volleyball, not for school. It's a very common trait, I think, across varsity sports. And the message is like, hey, what's it going to take to get to 80%? And 80% we use as a threshold because that's academic called Canadian. And uh, he was probably low 70s at the time and kind of cruising and, and took it upon himself to work. And uh, that's what we want from everyone. And the message we try to send, no matter where you are, is almost irrelevant. It's like, where are you going? And if you're happy to be where you are, then this might not be the place for you. So I appreciated Owens coming in for multiple individual sessions, working hard, asking questions, asking you video, almost to the point as a coach, sometimes it got annoying because he's just a guy that wanted to absorb and do everything and and try to get there. And he did the same thing in school. And and I appreciate it. And that's the attitude you're going to miss. It's it's a guy that was just working. Can you give us an update on on the other two guys? Is there anything you um, you can share about how they're doing? Yeah, the Owen Waterhouse situation is better than it looked earlier. Uh, some of the testing is, as he's been able to get higher level testing, like he wasn't able to get an MRI earlier. And the MRI has shown some positive results that they didn't think was there from the CAT scan. So that was great. And, and he's starting to show real signs of recovery. So they're hoping to move him to Kelowna as soon as possible. Um, just to be closer for his family, and, and it's a great sign to think they can move him. So he's still um, fully intubated. Well, he's got a tracheotomy now, so he's still getting breathing support. They're going to think about waking him up soon if he keeps progressing. So he's shown some really, really positive signs. Uh, and Riley Brennan's at GF Strong. Um, he's in a transition room right now, which he's waiting for a full room at the full GF Strong facility. But he's out of the hospital, which is a relief for him and his family and uh, starting the rehab process now. And have you been able to communicate uh, with him and has he been able to you know, talk to the guys at all in, in some way, Riley Brennan? Oh yeah, R- Riley is still on our group chat. Uh, I'd say probably 90% of the guys have visited him in the last six weeks. I've been down three myself. Some assistant coaches have all been down. So yeah, I mean, mentally I think what's going to be hard for Riley is would be hard for any young guy that's in a wheelchair is you got to accept the fact of where you are and and start moving forward I I think he'll get there Um, the physical stuff has gone really well for him so far so he's got another once he hits the full GF strong program the the protocol is usually seven weeks it's kind of a minimum and then the rest will depend on how fast he progresses so he still has a road to go for sure Um, but he's in a better space now and uh yeah, it, every time we've sent guys down or gone down to visit, it's it's definitely been a boost. And I communicated with him all weekend via text message. And, you know, he's he's had a what I would say is a very positive, you know, outlook for the situation he's in. I mean, you've, you've been through things in your life before. Um, obviously, nothing exactly like this. Um, a lot of these guys have probably never experienced any type of hardship remotely close to this. Um, what's it like to 
to see these young men go through this and, and the finality of it all. I was just talking to Mason Sedero, who's talked to me about how he used to uh, have cooking contests and they were all going to have cooking contests. And Dylan was his roommate and now now he, he's gone. He's wearing his shoes right now. Yeah. This is the first time these guys are going through any, anything like this. I mean, how, how, how much do you feel, feel for these guys? Yeah, I mean, it's especially hard, I think, on the first year guys because they've got a lot of other things on their plate. But I just said, unfortunately, and this was probably week one, like this is a loss of innocence and this is a first time to face mortality of someone your age. I mean, we all know of an older person that passed away and those are always tragedies, but not not like this. So I think it's hard for young guys, particularly to see mortality as a reality. And I think it's hard guys to realize that it could happen. And uh, that's been hard. What I want to give credit to the guys for is on the visits to Riley, they're working towards what Riley needs and staying positive and upbeat and talking to Riley just like they talk to Riley in any other situation. Uh, the guys I took to the funeral, Dylan and Corbin, were excellent ambassadors and taking something that's heavy and hard on. And And when we talked with Owen McInnes' family, I thought the guys did a tremendous job of sharing stories about Owen. So I got to commend these guys. Uh, I think they're handling it better than I would have at this age. I, I know they are handling it better than I would have at this age. So I give them credit, and I think a lot of it is still absorbing. Like, I do still feel in shock, and I think most of the guys still feel in shock. So... Yeah. Um, on, on the court on Friday night, I mean, I, I sent you a little text. I was getting a little emotional just seeing a clip, and I can't imagine what it, what it was like for you guys. Um, your underdogs, you know, outside of everything that happened, you're an underdog, you go into Winnipeg. Yeah. You know who you're playing for, everybody in the conference knows, and you go out and get this win. I mean, what was that like? Yeah, it was, uh, it was something else. Uh, I've never been part of something like that. I got asked a thousand times how the guys are going to respond, how they're going to play, and my answer was I have no idea. Um, we kept all the pregame stuff pretty short and sweet. And, you know, we're we're playing for the guys that are still fighting for their lives and or making a new life. So that's our message, and that's what we're fighting for. And I thought the guys were excellent and focused. And you could just feel like that pent up anger and emotion. And you know, I said they played like crazy, and we all cried like crazy after. So it was a watershed moment, I think, and I think it helped a lot of guys to start that process. And I. I can't be more proud of the way these guys not only handled the match, but this entire six weeks of their lives. So I, I got to give credit to these guys and, and their character is really shone through. Last one. Um, another part of that process is on Wednesday. Um, you guys are, there's going to be a, a celebration of life here at the TCC. Um, what are you expecting that uh, event to be like? Yeah, I think again, there's there's lots of you know my wife Heidi teaches organic chemistry at TRU, and she said there's lots of her colleagues and people she talks to on campus that are affected by this. Uh, some of them have taught these guys, some have not. Uh, I think it's going to be emotional. We do stuff in the community tournaments and clamps and clinics, and you know, we're connected to the volleyball club. So I, I think it's going to be emotional. I think you know. I've heard the hospital staff are still struggling with this a little bit. When you see three 20 year olds come in and, and this type of tragedy, and, and again, it's, it's such a mundane thing. Like my wife was at that stop sign 10 minutes before the accident. I've been at that stop sign hundreds of times. So I think that whole thing is still, everyone is, hasn't really sunk in yet. So I think for our guys, I think we've, we've accepted it. We've realized, okay, the old McKinnis story, it's tragic, but now it's done. And the Riley Brennan story is still ongoing, but we kind of know where it's at. The, the hard part is the Waterhouse story doesn't have a conclusion now. We're all hopeful that it will. So I think for some people, this will be a, a good conclusion for the Owen McInnes and a way to say, like all funerals and memorials are, a way to say goodbye and a way to express their grief. So I, I think it's going to be a heavy day.